Hey fellow backyard boyers, Nick here. Now today we're going to be building a basket maker style out lotl. This is made out of half an inch PVC pipe and is loosely based off of out lotls from the basket maker culture. It's a really nice, fairly short out lotl that's also flexible and it's a really forgiving out lotl to throw with. It's also featured in my latest book, Darts on Target. Here it is. We're also going to be making a takedown at Lottle Dart. And this is inspired by Justin Garnett of BasketMakerAtLottle.com, who actually came up with the idea of using plastic pipe for things like the point and connectors for at Lottle Dart. To start, you're going to need a 24 inch long piece of half an inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Now, you can use other types of pipe and other grades of PVC pipe. It doesn't have to be Schedule 40 because this isn't going to be under as much stress as a bow. So, you can get away with using different types of pipes for this. Now, the length is good for this style of atlatl because it's flexible, it can be on the shorter side. And just a general rule of thumb, the shorter the atlatl, the more forgiving and the more accurate it is. The longer it is, the more power you get. Now, this is a general rule, and it differs, but for this particular build, we're doing 24 inches. Now, some other things you're going to need is that later on, we're going to be wrapping a, the finger loops onto the atlatl. And so I'm using a piece of leather for the finger loop, or for the finger loops. And this piece of leather should be 8 inches long and anywhere from about 3 quarter to an inch wide. You're also going to need something to wrap the loops on. I'm going to be using artificial sinew, which is polyester fibers with beeswax. But you could also use hemp or even cotton twine. It really doesn't matter what you use for this, as long as it's a fairly strong cordage. The first thing we're going to do is taper the pipe so that the atlatl is flexible and it has a consistent flex to it. So I've got my heating trough here. It's just a piece of cardboard with aluminum tape to reflect the heat. And I'm going to heat this up and then we're going to press it in the flattening jig. And I've got the flattening jig set to 5 eighths of an inch, which is about the inside diameter of the half an inch pipe. Here we go. So now that it's nice and pliable, I'm going to place it onto my flattening jig and I'm just going to apply pressure until it cools. So it's going to take about two minutes to cool down. Cool. I'm just going to check it, make sure that it's everything straight. And here it is. So first thing, we're going to heat up the end of the handle and then smash it to give this a nice finished edge. So here we go. Okay, now that this is nice and pliable, I'm going to take this board and smash the end of the pipe under the board. So just hold it there. It's going to take about a minute to cool. Alright, here it is. 
So this is nice and closed up so we can clean this up and round it off and it'll fit nicely in the hand. So now we're going to work on the area where the finger loops will go. So I'm going to heat up just this one inch section and then we're going to press the handle in. And it helps to use a couple scrap pieces of half inch pipe for that. Alright, so you can see I've heated this up and it's pretty soft. So I'm going to take my scrap pieces of pipe and I'm going to use them to press the sides of the handle. As you can see, just like that. Alright, here it is. Just want to make sure that the handle is straight and that everything lines up. Here's the semi-finished handle. Now we're going to be cutting the spur and the loading groove. Now to do this, you're going to need a knife of some kind, and it should be a nice sharp knife that you can easily handle. And we're going to heat this up until it's soft enough to where we can easily cut this with the knife, and then we're going to cut along these lines. And the dimensions of this are the spur is three eighths of an inch wide. It starts about half an inch from the end and it is half an inch long. And this entire channel here is two inches long. So here we go. And be careful when doing this. If you hit the sides with the heat gun too much, they will start to split. It's not going to affect the structure of this, but it won't look very nice. So here we go. Alright, it's nice and pliable now. So I'm going to go ahead, take my knife, and just cut down this side. Cut down this side, cut the spur, and I'll just make sure everything is cut. There we go. Now, I'm going to heat this up and then we're going to press these sides back down and we're going to pull the spur out so we can work on it. So you want to press these sides and what you can do is either take your flattening board or a ruler or something and just kind of press these sides down to flatten them again. Now that we've got that shaped, what you want to do is heat up the entire main shaft of the atlatl until it's just soft enough where we can put a little bend into it. We want to put a little bit of flex into this to help everything line up. Now, you just give it a little bit of a bend. We don't need a huge amount of flex, but basically what we're looking for is so that the loading groove is now in line with the end of the handle. That way, when you're holding a dart here, the dart will sit in the loading groove and rest near the end of the handle here. Or if you're going to hold it like this, you want it so that it'll be able to rest on your hand. I've gone ahead and I've filed all my edges, so I've finished off the end here. 
And you can do whatever you want to this end. You can do different shapes, however you want to finish this off. And on the bottom here, I just rounded this off. That way it sits nicely in the hand, rests against the palm. Or if you're going to hold this with a hammer grip, you know, it's, there's no sharp edges to get in the way. So now we're going to heat this end up, the spur, and we're going to adjust it so that it sits in line with the rest of the outlaw. So here we go. Just going to heat this up gently. So now, we want to press this down. You want it to be just a little bit above the loading groove. But one of the purposes for this groove is that you can actually put the end of your dart in here and it will sort of self-align or self-center onto the spur. So you want to press this down. And an easy way to do this is to take a flat surface and then rest the atlatl on top of the flat surface and you just want to let the spur get pressed down in place so you can see here it just barely sticks up this will be enough to get good connection here for flinging darts and I've gone ahead and painted this a light brown now that this is somewhat dry, it's not fully dry yet, but it's somewhat dry, I'm going to go ahead and put a full wood finish on it. And I'm using liquid brown shoe polish. This is really simple. You just take your applicator sponge, get a little bit of shoe polish on here, and then just start spreading it out. And what will happen is that as you do this, it will start to dry and set and as it does as long as you're keeping up this motion you'll start getting this sort of wood grain pattern just get the ends real quick and you can change it up you know add a little bit of waviness to it there's lots of different things you can do but I prefer prefer sort of a straight grain look to it and I like to do one face at a time until I get down to the handle and then you want to hit this with your heat gun briefly to set it and then you can turn it around and finish it up. So here you can see the wood grain pattern. And this is with a matte clear coat. So now that we still have a little bit of daylight, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my finger loops. So what you need to do is take your piece of leather, your leather strip, and you want to cut a one inch wide or a one inch long slit in the middle of it. I'm going to widen this just a little bit in both directions. Okay. So now I'm going to put this over the handle. And I want the suede side on the outside so that the smooth side goes against my fingers. So I bring this down. You want to pull it right to where this indentation is. This is where the loops are going to start. So you want to bring, bring it down just to that level. Now I've got my artificial sinew, but you can use any sort of cord. So I've gone ahead, 
and wrap over this loop. Now I want to make a few turns, about four passes over this should be good and we'll hold it in place like that. Now I take these leather loops or these leather strips on the side and you want to fold them over. You can see I folded this up. Now Once I've sort of pushed it down as far as it'll go, take my artificial sinew or my cord and I'll just start crisscrossing over. Once you've gone over about four times, it should be secure enough to finish off. So to finish this off, I'm going to wrap over my finger about five times. Now that I've done that, I'm going to cut the end, and then I want to bring this loose end up under the loops, up to the top. I'm going to take the start of these loops here, this piece, and I use it to wrap over the end right there. So we want to pull it tight and wrap tightly. Now I take the loose end, pull it tight, and cut the ends. And there it is. All right, I've gone ahead and I've started the second part of my wrap here, just how I started the other one. Now you want to take your, these pieces of leather, and you want to bring them down so that they form your finger loops. Now depending on the style you're going to throw with this, you may want to make this smaller so that only your fingertips can go through or you want to make it bigger so your thumb and forefinger can go through. It all depends on how you want to throw. This style, usually the only the fingertips will fit, but it's however you want to make this. So I'm going to make it so that it's a little on the larger side. So you can see my thumb and forefinger will fit through this, but it can also be held with two fingers. So now I take my loose end and I just wrap around the outside of these loops. Just two turns for now. So now I want to double check and make sure that my fingers will fit in here. Kind of pull them down and size them right now while the cord is still loose. Let's see. A little bit more on this side. And perfect. So now that you've got it where you want it, tighten it up. Double check, make sure everything is pointed in the direction you want it to go. And then just start wrapping. Once you've wrapped this over and it's locked in place like this, I'm going to bring these little ends down and then you want to continue wrapping over the top here.
So now that you've done sort of a crisscross crisscross wrap on the top, I'm gonna do like you did on the bottom, and wrap over your finger about five times. You wanna bring this end tightly and wrap around the atlatl. And then you take the loose end, you pull it tight, and you cut all the loose pieces. And here it is. Here's the finished at Lottle. Now that we've got some daylight, just wanted to show this to you guys. You can see the nice full wood grain pattern. And here's the wrap we did on the finger loops. So now I'll see you on the next part where we build our at Lottle dart.